A bag of M&Ms has six red, two green, three blue, and four yellow M&Ms. Let's go ahead and write that down. I'm sure that'll be useful to us here. So we'll say first red, we have six of them, green, we have two, blue, we have three, and yellow, we have four. So that gives us a total of just adding those up. Six plus two is eight, plus three is 11, plus four is 15. All right. Um, we could also change or, you know, give a notation for each of these for short. So we could say R is red. Oops, it did some autocorrect there. Let's undo that. We'll try that again. Let's see if it does it again. Okay, there. I put a space after it and it didn't make it the trademark, the um, R sign, not trademark. What is that? Whatever it is. <laughs> the R symbol. Blue is B and yellow is Y. All right. I don't know why I did that really because they already gave us some letters here. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see what they said. Um, suppose you randomly select two M&Ms. Okay, so we are randomly selecting two. So this is, notice this is multiple trials, which means we should use the multiplication rule. Okay. Um, it says, Select two from the bag one at a time without replacing. Okay, so that means that we're going to be dealing with dependent events where the probability of the second event is different than the first. Because if you take an M&M &M out of the bag and leave it out, then your total has changed and therefore your probabilities have changed. Okay, then it says let A, let A equal that the first M&M is red. Okay, so A is the event that the first M&M is red. B is the event that the second M&M is blue. Okay, so find the following probabilities and write your answers as fractions. Okay, so P of A. Okay, so P of A, I'm going to write A here, P of A, which just to translate it for myself means that the first M&M is blue or no red. Okay, so now when I select that first M&M, and it's red, there were six favorable um, outcomes out of a total of 15 possible. So six M&Ms out of 15 total M&Ms. So that would be how I get my answer there. Um, so six out of 15, that's the answer as a fraction. Um, six and 15 both have a common denominator divisor, I can reduce this fraction. So if I divide both 6 and 15 by 3, I'm going to get 2 out of uh, 5. So that should be the first answer. Okay. Next, the probability of B given A. Okay, remember that that symbol right there, the vertical line, it almost looks like a slash, but it's very vertical. That reads as such that, or you could say um, the probability of B happening after A has already happened, okay? So I'm going to say the probability of B, now what is B? B is the second M&M &M is blue. The second is blue after having taken out one red, okay? Because the this is after we've already had the first M&M &M be red and then we didn't put it back because it's without replacement. So now that there's one red M&M taken out, I now have different numbers, right? Just slightly different numbers. Um, just the number of red is different and also the total is different, right? So now I'm going to calculate this probability as um, how many of them are blue, which now is still three, 
but divided by 14 rather than dividing it by 15. And 3 and 14 don't have any common divisors, so I'm going to go ahead and put 3 out of 14 as my answer. Now next it says the probability of A and B. Now remember the word and in this notation can sometimes serve in place of the word both if there's only one trial. But here, since we have two trials, we're selecting two M&Ms one after another, this word and should be interpreted as the phrase and then. So A happens and then B happens, right? So we want the probability of event A, which is the first M&M is red, right? And then the second one is blue. Okay, so first of all, the probability that the first one is red is 6 out of 15. Okay, and the probability that the second one is blue, given that the first one was red, was 3 out of 14. Okay, we, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I've been putting a, if you haven't noticed, I've been putting an apostrophe before typing in if I want to keep it as a fraction and not have it calculate as a decimal or format as a date. So I'm putting the apostrophe and then 3 to over 14 because I just want to see these as fractions for, now, for right now. Also, we could use the reduced fraction here that we did from part A. Okay, so I'm literally using the answers from my first part of the question and the answer from the second part of my question and multiplying them together to get the answer to the third part of the question. So I'm going to want to multiply numerators to numerators. So 2 times 3 would be 6, or you can just do it like this if you want to do the math out this way. And then in the bottom, 5 times 14. Okay, now one thing you might notice before we even press enter here, because this is going to give us a decimal, and actually what we want is a fraction. So let me get rid of this right here. I'm not going to I'm not going to calculate it as a decimal since I'm supposed to answer with a fraction. So, um, but before I leave this, I want to notice that I have two in the numerator and 14 in the denominator, and those are both even. They can be reduced. So if I divide both the top and the bottom by two then this will become a 1, and this will become a 7, right? And then I can simplify that as 3 over 5 times 7 is 35. Okay, now, um, if you're having some trouble with reducing fractions, um, one thing you can do that can be a little helpful, first of all, if you have a scientific calculator, there's a way to convert decimals to fractions and even take a fraction and make it into a reduced fraction. But, um, you know, it's a good idea to kind of get good at doing this in general just so that you're not so dependent on calculators. And one way you can do it is you can try to do the reduction and then if you're not confident that you're, you did it right, you can try calculating it as a decimal. So let's say I calculate, um, Let's just look at 6 over 15, right? If I calculate that as a decimal, it's 0.4, right? And then if I calculate 2 over 5 as a decimal, they are the same. So that's how I know that I did my reduction right. Um, same thing with this here. Like if I figured it out that it was going to be 6 over whatever that was, um, 5 times, what's 5 times 14? 70. Okay, so if I had already figured out that I thought my answer was going to be 6 over um, 70, and then I thought, well, I reduce that. If I divide both of those by 2, I get 3 over 35. Well, I can look to see if 6 divided by 70 as a decimal is the same as 
three divided by 35 as a decimal. So I'm just noticing they're the same. That's just one way to see if your reduction worked out. Um, so that's it.